Greetings, everyone, and welcome to The Christian and the Culture. I'm Pastor Eric Lambert of Bethel Deliverance International Church, and we thank you for taking this opportunity to join us as we discuss pertinent issues from the Word of God that relate to our culture. You know, the 21st century is one of intrigue, scientific advancements, all types of computerized luxuries being put into your hands. Who would have ever thought 10 years ago we'd have something like air fryers? <laughs> yes, we had microwave <laughs> ovens and they, you know, they did a good job. But now I'm saying you can do a whole meal, a whole meal in a few minutes from yeah. the luxury of an air fryer. Yeah. Think about it. Well, with all those scientific achievements, you know, cell phones and all the other things we have going for us, mm. God's word is still relevant. And the yes, words of the prophets of God are coming to pass. So while we thank him for the scientific achievements, we also want to thank him for watching over his word to perform it. Yes. Here with me, as always, are two outstanding Bible teachers, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon, pastor of the Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Pastor, how are you today? Bishop, thank you so much. I am well. Thank you for asking. And Christian and Culture family, we're so excited. Once again, you know what we're going to tell you. Move the coffee table. <laughs> we got some hot topics to talk to you about today. <laughs> amen, amen. And as always, joining us is Pastor Tim Baldwin. He's the pastor of Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Pastor, how are you? Bishop, I'm doing well. And uh, again, Christian in the Culture uh, family, welcome. Come on in, take a seat, get some coffee, get something hot to drink or <laughs> something cold to drink, and yeah. let's, let's jump in. Let's yeah. do it. Amen. Well, Amen. listen, children of God, we are confronted by issues that challenge our faith and stretch our ability to believe the Word of God. What is the Bible? The Bible is a series of books given to us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to help us form the proper doctrine to live. That's right. Our day-to-day -day lives yes. are guided by the principles of the Word of God. Now, you got to dig into it, find out how to extract what you need, and reject those things that don't apply to you, but grab hold of the lesson that's being taught. Yes. Because some things are archaic in application, but not archaic in their meaning. Yes. And God may be saying to us, you know, when he talks about turning the other cheek, he certainly doesn't want us standing outside letting people <laughs> slap us, because that's not working in my neighborhood. <laughs> but he does want me to have an attitude that yes. doesn't seek retribution. Yes. So if I am offended, let it go. Paul teaches the church at Corinth. He said, listen, just take the wrong. Let them say what they want to say. The Lord will avenge us. He takes care of everything. Mm. And you know what we should do when someone wrongs us? Pray for them. Amen. Don't seek for God to destroy them. Pray for them. Pray for those who curse you and bless those who treat you poorly. Mm. Well, you know, we promised you we'd come back to continue the compromising church of Pergamum, and we're going to do just that. Oh, Our conversation left a lot of unbuttoned <laughs> jackets, and so we want you to button up those final buttons as we look at the scripture. In Revelation chapter 2, Jesus speaks to a church that was guilty of compromise, yeah. even up to and including the worship of Baal and holding on to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans yeah. and those things that destroy the fabric of the church. And so out of the compromise, Jesus rebukes them and demands that they become overcomers. Right. Well, let's again, just to uh, refresh our audience, let's look at what it means to compromise. Yeah. What, is, what is Jesus saying when he talks about compromise? Uh, when he talks about compromise, again, from the last show, we talked about uh, how it, 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 it allows us to um, it, it, like we have a lack of holiness. There's a lack of holiness. Mm -hmm. There is one thing I talked about was uh, the lack of preaching the authentic gospel, um, and so we compromise in, all, in those ways. Mm -hmm. We we sort of cozy ourselves up with the world, and that was one of the things that was happening in, mm -hmm. in Pergamos that that they were uh, they didn't see anything wrong with being friends to the Roman government and mm -hmm. all that that entails. So that compromising piece is 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 really important. But that that's those are the couple of things that I believe uh, is is compromising in terms of us being believers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Pastor Brian, over in Numbers, chapters 22 through 25, yes, sir. Balaam has been commissioned by mm. Balak to curse the people of God. Yes. Well, God has already told him you can't curse them because That's they right. are positionally blessed. Yes. So he comes up with an idea to earn his offering. Mm -hmm. He says, I can't curse them, yes. but if you release the Moabite women yes. and let them walk through the camp, 
He said they'll curse themselves. Now That's there's a said. saying that we probably have all been familiar mm. with, which is if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. So yeah. that's what Balaam does. Yeah. Balaam says, all right, join the Moabite women and they'll curse themselves. Yes. How is that wow. applicable to the church today? In what wow. ways are we not able to beat them, but we're joining them? Wow, wow. wow. Uh, thanks, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, Romans 6, I believe, talks about uh, we have this, this liberty in Christ, this freedom, but it's not so free. Mm. And the hard part is our generation of preaching uh, lends itself to what I call generous orthodoxy. The, the orthodox message is so generous. You can, you can be free to do anything. Right? Mm. You can be free to, even if you want to be free to sin, you know, just know that, you know, wheel it in after a while. Sure. Uh, but, but the conversation is that you can just be free and God just accepts you the way you are and mm. accepts what you do. Well, I do believe God accepts you the way you are, but I do know that God expects you to change. And the messages being preached a lot, not all, but a lot of messages now, are, are telling Christians that it, it's okay to, for the, this liberality uh, that you're living is is so okay that that God is just so cool about it that you know you guys are too uptight and mm. that's not the way the Bible puts it. <laughs> the Bible, Jesus, in fact, says uh, if you even think to look back after starting to serve me, he says you're not fit for my kingdom. Wow. Uh, either go hard or you go home. Yeah. And, and it is a message that Jesus resounded. He never gives room or lends license to half-heartedness, to halfway being done, and to halfway serving him. So I think we're faulted because of the messages we're preaching. It's kind of lending the idea that freedom is all okay. God's okay with all of it. Are we joining the culture, gentlemen, when we become political? And I'll, let, uh, I'll clarify this way, because uh, uh, I love you. I don't want you to feel trapped. I just want you to feel trapped. Uh, uh, you, 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 you talk about the Christian in the world, in this culture, yes, sir. and getting involved in politics. All right. Now, I don't think that it would be a sin to get involved in it. Here's no. where I have the conflict, and I look for the compromise. How much Christ can I preach from a political perspective? If I'm a member of the House of Representatives, can I quote Bible in an institution that forbids it? Am I compromising if I run for public office? Wow. wow. That's, a, that's a good question. Here's why. Because you're not just responsible for your house now. You make legislation for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even as a Christian, if I hold office, public office, my office is not just for believers. Right. My office is for my constituents. Wow. Yeah. And so if I'm a believer uh, wow. and I come into office, am I, and look, we can look at history. Right. And let's just talk about our presidents. Mm -hmm. We can look at our presidents throughout history. Some who have been believers, some who have been Catholics, some have been Christians. Yes. Look at their legislation. They're not governing just believers. They have to govern people. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm, I'm going to say this, that there is a level of compromise because you can't just make legislation. As, as a matter of fact, you're not making legislation for the church. Right. You're, you're making legislation for a country, for a people, for your constituents. So there is a level of, of compromise in terms of the legislation that you put forth and what you will sign and won't sign. I'm hard pressed to find a president that says, um, I'm not going to sign uh, the abortion bill, you know, or I'm going to outlaw it, right? From biblical from, perspective. From a biblical perspective, so. right? Everything that they're doing in terms of, the, of abortion, whichever side you are on, you're doing it from the perspective of a constituent perspective, mm -hmm. you're, those who you're leading. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am validating the rights of my constituency. Absolutely, in public office. But in public office, but not promoting the doctrines of the Word of God. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now listen again, Bishop, as, as a believer, there are opportunities to inject Christ. There are opportunities to push legislation that will benefit believers. Yeah. But across the board, it's not even Can't possible mm -hmm. because all of your constituents aren't believers. Okay. Pastor Brian, yeah, your yeah. words. Uh, I, I 
Pastor Tim kind of nailed it, absolutely. Uh, you, you can't have both worlds. But what There's happened no to, it. to those believers in the first century who were confronted by the same thing? Yeah, a, a lot of them uh, said no to Caesars and lost their lives. You know, it, it's just a hard truth. Right. And I'm not saying, you know, we, we lose our lives now, but uh, the, the obvious intent about this is there's no way to serve public office and promote the kingdom of our God. Wow. Right? You can serve it and wow. you can read a Bible verse over the meeting, wow. but you can't, you, they're not, you're not there to promote the kingdom. Yeah. And at some point, they will let you know, you sure. know this is not about the kingdom. This right. is not about the Bible. Right. Half the people you will, your constituents, are not even believers. So they don't want to hear about, you know, Jesus' message. They want to know, can you get things done on our level and make us happy, do what we want to do? So it is difficult. So do you, do you feel, either one of you, do you feel that the church may be wanting a pastor as opposed to a president? Mm -hmm. I think they do. I think, I think they do. And, and let me say this also. I'm, I'm not against believers in politics. Absolutely. But it's a, it's a fine line. And it, because again, you can't totally promote Christ. Can't yeah. totally that can't it. be your total agenda. You can't agenda. give God his glory. Right. You, you can't. You can. And so, again, I do believe, I believe that God... Uh, that that government is important to God. Sure it is. Yeah, sure it's it important is. to God, and so so it should be important to us as believers. But how much of a kingdom agenda right. can we impose on a culture and a country that's not godly, and a culture and country that does not have a covenant with well, God? Well, let's look in the Bible. Uh, Jonah goes down to Nineveh, and he speaks yes. the judgment of God. Mm -hmm. What's the response of this heathenistic king? <laughs> Shut down the country, yeah. put everybody in sackcloth, and cry out for the mercy of yeah. God. Right. Fast forward it to 2020, guys. Forward to 2020. Mm -hmm. this, this pandemic hits. What would have happened if our president, whoever was in office, said, whoever. hey, yeah. Shut down the country. God is trying Everybody, to God's trying wow. to tell us something. Wow. Everybody humble themselves, hmm. go into prayer before God, and maybe he'll have mercy oh, yes. on us. That would have been the right thing to do. Yes. yes. And he would have lost a lot behind it. Yes. Sure he, would have. he would have lost so much behind sure and, and, and would not have done it because of that. Because yes. of that. Because of that. And, and, and when you look at it, he was the president yeah. of the conservative right. believer. Yeah. Right. You know, and so, but again, you know, at the end of the day, I, Bishop, I agree with you 100%. If that would happen, this country would be in such a different, a different place. Country. And God's not yeah. allowed to be represented along those lines. So now we go back to Second Chronicles yes. where, he, where uh, um, Solomon yes. prays to God and he says, if your people find themselves in a street, in a, in a, in a disadvantageous Wherever position, they, yes, he yes. said, if they just turn towards this place and yes. pray. God gives that famous yes. verse yes. in, in, in uh, Second Chronicles 7. If my people mm -hmm. that are called oh, by my man. name yes. will humble themselves, turn from their fleshly yes. ways, yes, yes. seek my face and pray, yes. he says, I will heal their land. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the onus then is put on us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So we can't compromise because we're the land prayers. We're the gap standards. We're those people. What does Ezekiel yes, say? Yes, God yes. says, I'm going to destroy the land. But I sought for somebody to stand between stand me and the land, yes. and he can't find couldn't any find gap him. standards. Couldn't find them. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we've become... Part of the problem. So, much, yeah. so now, again, go back to Matthew yeah, 22. Yeah, absolutely correct. Jesus says, give Caesar what's his and give God what's his. Now, Pastor Tim gave us uh, a very good explanation of those things. But what I want to do is hyper-literalize okay. for a moment. Because some <laughs> of our people do that. Yes. And they write us and they say, well, what about this and what about that? Yes. When Jesus said, give Caesar what's his and give God what's his, the implication is that the things that are of Caesar yeah. are not the things that are of God. Right. That's the implication. Yes. Right. But as you said, the image and the superscription and yeah. all those other things, in other words, those things belong to Caesar. Right. Yeah. Right. What belongs to Caesar now? Hmm. What belongs to Caesar now? Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar wants everything. You know, <laughs> well, Caesar you know, wants taxes, God wants to tithe. <laughs> what, what? Well, well, you sure. know, again, Bishop, we, when we because we are subject to the laws of the land, I mean, we can we can spew out twenty laws that, right. that things that belong to Caesar. You know, um, yeah. being a good civil citizen, right. uh, uh, paying your taxes. Right. You know, all of those things, and, and those things again, as as citizens of this country, sure. we're required to sure. do some things. Okay, sure. and be and if you don't, then you are subject to the penalty. All right. Of, so of those, those things. things are enacted by Congress. 
uh, uh, signed by the president, they become law. Right. Yeah. Taxes, you know, certain other constitutional sure. responsibilities. Sure. Sure. What about COVID-19 vaccines? Yeah, that's another uh, What if they make that a law? <laughs> then there's going to be a lot of fighting, just as it is now. And Pastor Brian brought this up in our last episode. Yeah. And, and I agree because when it comes to forcing something on you mm-hmm. and your body, that's a different level that's of government. Level. That's, that's like almost tyranny. And, and I understand the implication is, okay, we want, we want health. Right, you know, yes. we, we want to get out of this pandemic, but there's so many things going on behind the scenes in terms of people not trusting, especially our community, yeah. you know, not tr- tr- trusting, <laughs> trusting the vaccine for a myriad of reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so when you get into government forcing you to do things, then that yeah. goes beyond the scope of government, especially based on our Constitution. Absolutely. You know, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And and I and I know we could talk about what we put in these He's bodies. Brewing. I'm just letting you know that. I'm just <laughs> oh, I you see know. it. I see it. It's I see it. Over there. The wheels are turning. <laughs> but you know, it, it's just a, a really fantastic argument. You know, how, how much do we give of Caesar? Caesar, at this point, could say, "Well, we want to make a law and, and demand that you get that that vaccine." Well, to me, that kind of feels like when we when we talk about that mark. You know, at some point a ruler of a world will be so uh, filled with megalomania that he will ultimately demand that every citizen of it get it or else. And when you start to do that, and I, I agree with Pastor Tim, you're starting to now close in the parameters. Now this doesn't feel like freedom anymore. Uh, this doesn't feel like the land of freedom. This feels like a place of almost dictatorship, a place where you can't be free. You can say it, but you're, but you're not there. So if I can't say yes to what I put in my body or what I, what I put in or what I don't put in, um, you know, then it feels like something different. Hmm. And I think that's where a lot of Christians. So then we are don't challenged. give Caesar what belongs to him. Or let me rephrase: we give Caesar what's his as long as we don't think it's injurious to us. <laughs> Well, no, so. no, because I think taxes are injurious. <laughs> <laughs> and the consequences, and the consequences, jail, is yeah, right. You know, yeah, garnishment of wages. Right, right, right. So what, 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 what the government is saying is, in the consequence yeah. of avoiding this, is more debts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so you, you, the Christian then says, "Well, I'm not going to do it because I don't want certain things to go on my body," which scientifically we. Have a, we, we, we can argue that forever, <laughs> scientifically. I, we could. It's, we could. You know, it's like my argument. And for the record, I'm not say, an anti-vaxxer. Say, just, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. We, yeah. we are discussing it from a, a philosophical perspective yes. for our audience. Yes, yes, Because yes. a number of our, of our listeners have written yeah. and asked, why don't you guys take a position uh, on the vaccine? Yeah. Because I don't feel that it's our place to tell you what yeah. to do. Absolutely. Our job is to compare scripture with scripture Absolutely. and give you ammunition to make a decision. Absolutely. Right. And you know what we're doing is throwing out points yes. that will enable you to say, hey God, all right, now I never saw it that way before, or I did see it this way. Then you have others who just, you know, they go along because they just don't feel any conviction one way or the other. Yeah. And that's fine, too. Yeah. But we, I think the thing that we share, the, one of the things that we share about this particular topic is that it grieves our hearts to see the body of Christ ripped apart Being over so it. divided. Amen. We should not Amen. be arguing that's among right. saints that's over right. a vaccine. That's right. Absolutely. We shouldn't. Absolutely. We shouldn't. Absolutely. There are some of you, God knows, God knows, you play the lotto. And you, <laughs> you faithfully right. get your ticket. That's right. And you believe you're going to hit those numbers. Yeah. And you do. And then there are others who don't do it, and they will put you into hell for doing it. <laughs> there are always going to be issues yeah. where we have, uh, we have to compromise. Now, here's mm-hmm. my compromise. Paul teaches something to the people of Rome, in Rome. He says these words, and I believe them deep in my heart. He says, hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is the man who condemneth himself in the thing which he alloweth, who condemneth himself not in the thing that he allows. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And what that means is if you can't be true to yourself, then you're sinning. Now you go to God and you get direction. Don't let yourself be swayed to the point where you lose who you are. That's right. The views that you're hearing here, as Pastor said, he's not an anti-vaxxer. Right. He's right. a person who says, this is a concern That's that right. I have. That's right. And as he lays that concern before the Lord, yes. the Lord can give him direction one That's way exactly or the right. other. 
We're not trying to pontificate a point or make you feel bad if you do or bad if you don't. Right. Here's our point. As Christians, are we obligated right. to do everything? And the answer is no, right. because some things are not beneficial. That's right. Abortion is the law of this land, sure but you are compelled to avoid it. That's exactly right. So in that reference, Christians should not give that to Caesar. Absolutely. So if you are pregnant and you're young or you're middle-aged and you're pregnant and you are even thinking about uh, abortion because it's the law of the land, mm -hmm. no, as a believer, you can't do it. Not for you. Amen. That's right. You cannot That's do it. Right. So you can't give Caesar what belongs to him That's because right. it's life and life belongs to God. Wow. You say, well, preacher, it's easy for you to say you don't have to have that baby. No, you're right. And I sympathize with that. And mm. I'm sorry that that was the consequence of an action, a moment of mm. passion. I'm sorry. Yeah. But we cannot just make the wrong worse yeah. by killing. <laughs> we can't do that. Who knows? That That's baby right. you have may come up with the cure for cancer. That's right. May yes. have the cure for diabetes. That's right. That's Don't right. rob us of the ability of your child that God has looked down through eternity yes. and filled your womb with that mm. precious life. Mm. This isn't about uh, a vaccine. It's not. It's about you going to God and getting direction from him. Wow. This COVID pandemic will end. I don't know when, but Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a season for everything. Yes. <laughs> and when this season yes. is over, yes. you're going to have to face yourself. Wow. And you're going to have to look at yourself in the mirror and determine if your decisions were yours, mm. if they were honorable. Don't jump on, don't jump off because of what others tell you. It's not our place right. to tell you what to do. That's it's right. our place to tell you to surrender yourself to God and don't compromise scriptural teachings. Yes. Understand mm -hmm. God has many pathways of healing. Some are miraculous without doctors. Some are doctors. Some right. are through homeopathic remedies. That's right. Some are through remedies out of the ground. When Hezekiah was dying with what we call a skin cancer, a melanoma, which is one of the most deadliest cancers you can have, yeah. God told Isaiah to make a clump of figs <laughs> and put it on. And later on, medical science determined that there is a component in figs yeah. that kills cancer. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. God will always yes. have a way to heal you. Some of you will take your vaccine and do fine. God bless you. Right. That was God's plan for you. Others may decide, I don't want to do it, and you'll yeah. do fine. That's God right. bless you. That's God's plan for you. That's right. Now, me, I think you should be led by the Lord. Amen. Amen. And God is not the author of confusion. That's right. So if you are confused right now, then God is not directing you. That's right. God will give you peace. One of the key components yes. of Christianity is peace. Peace. So don't listen to all these, these people who are filling your minds up with their own personal feelings, telling you what they think. No, listen, get your information, go to God and say, what do you do? And then mm. obey what he tells yes. you. Yes. The biggest thing in your life is whether or not you're saved. If COVID were to hit me and kill me, I'd go home and be with the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. I don't care what statistic I'll be here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'll go home and be with the Lord. Will you? Will you find your eternal home with the Christ of Calvary? Or will you just be a body of skeletons and skin in the ground? Mm. Not me. Not me. Mm. To be absent from this body yes. is to be present with the Lord. And the three of us here today want you to make that decision. Yes, yes. yes we do. We want you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Yes. To ask him to come into you. And if you are born again and you're finding you're slipping away because of all this increased pressure and you're discouraged because of not only the pandemic, but the, the Christian response to politics, yeah. all this fighting and attacking the leaders. Let's stop the insanity yes. and turn back to Christ, yes. the author and finisher of faith, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, mm. the Prince of Peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and in me, you'll have peace. Yes. So Christian and Culture family, we thank you. We thank you for joining us. We want you to know you are loved, you are honored by God, and no weapon formed against you will prosper. Will prosper. Father, in Jesus' name, bless our audience, yes, all who listen, and I pray that you will encourage their hearts to take a stand for the glorious yes. gospel of Jesus Christ 
and never give in mm. to the traps and the tricks of our adversary. We pray this in Jesus' name. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Bless you. Discover God's design for family through Bishop Eric Lambert's sermon series, Strengthening the Family. This powerful series will provide you with practical instruction on how to strengthen your family relationships using scriptures from the Word of God. Receive the five-part series, Strengthening the Family, on CD or DVD for your donation of $35 or more. To order, call 1-800-550-3284 or visit ericlambertministries.org. Get your copy of Strengthening the Family so you can build a family life that brings victory to your home and glory to God. Does God desire for his followers to be conformed to today's culture? Or are believers supposed to function, think, and be distinctively different? In his new book, Cancel the Culture, Securing Our Identity as Christians, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. provides guidance for the Christian trapped in a struggle for identity. Each chapter of the book presents a challenge for the reader to cancel a specific ungodly influence of modern culture. As these influences are abandoned, the special purpose of God's calling for His children will become clearer. Journey toward rediscovering your identity as a child of God by ordering your copy of Cancel the Culture. Visit ericlambertministries.org to order the book and find more resources that will enhance your walk with Christ. Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.